What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today I'm going to be answering a question that I get a lot. Uh, in the comments, uh, patron messages, Instagram messages, Facebook messages, I've got no problem answering it, but I'd like to do a video on kind of how I pick my carry guns, and maybe how you should pick your carry gun. Now you have to remember starting off before any of this, that everybody's different, everybody has different needs, and we'll get into that throughout the video. But just remember to kind of take these as bullet points, not as recommendations, and kind of use which one that you want to figure out what's best for you and your comfort level and your skill level. Now before we do that, I want to mention my patient supporters. Thank you guys very much. Because of you guys, the channel's still here, and I really appreciate all your support. Because of that, we do cool stuff on the patron page, including exclusive content, and I bounce ideas off you, and I try to do my best to answer all of your questions. It's difficult to reach me on a lot of my social media because I am just me. I don't have a big studio or anything that answers my questions for me. If you get a comment answered by me or a question on Instagram or Patreon, it's always just me. So if you want to be a Patreon supporter, all you got to do is go down to the description and click the link. Also in that link, or also in that description, is a link to a local shelter that I like to support, Names Iowa. It's a youth shelter, and those kids could use your support, so please go down there and donate to that shelter. Now, we are going to try to help you decide what carry gun is right for you. And for that, I have brought out a plethora of different types of guns, different calibers, different actions, and different holster systems that go with a certain set of guns. So you're gonna have to figure out what is best for you, and this video is gonna help you do that. So we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna talk about some of the categories that I think is most important for a carry gun in kind of what order you should consider those categories as well. And I'm gonna depart a little bit from a lot of the uh, special forces type guys in the carry department because I'm a civilian. And I kind of think of things, especially handguns, in a concealed carry capacity. If I'm gonna be in a gunfight, it's most likely going to be with the gun that I have on me at the time, and that is going to be my carry gun. There's a lot of reasons why I decided to carry a gun, and most of them are the same as your guys's. but long story short is most people who carry a firearm generally have already had bad things happen to them and know that they can. What I like to do is be responsible for the safety of me and the safety of my loved ones and the safety of people that may need assistance in my immediate area. So one of the things that you're going to have to be with your carry gun is confident and comfortable. Okay, and that's one of the things, two of the things that is left out of the discussion most of the time with concealed carry is number one, being confident with your firearm and number two, being comfortable with it because it doesn't really matter how good it is. Let me give you an example. So this is a Staccato C2. This is an incredibly accurate, fast and reliable firearm. No lock back on the MBX mags. The Staccato C2 is the most accurate compact gun I've ever fired on this channel. However, as you can see here, it's not the world's smallest gun. This is a Canik SFX. Again, a, a very reliable, accurate, extremely usable firearm. However, very big gun. Not very heavy, but very big. So you have to consider what size of gun that you're comfortable carrying. And whatever size you think that is, most likely it's gonna be a little bit smaller than that. If you carry a gun consistently like I do, day after day, or like my wife does for that matter, you're gonna find that you're going to want a firearm that is comfortable on you all the time that you can carry without really having to worry about it. When you first start carrying a handgun, you're gonna be concerned, are you printing, are you doing this? You're gonna be jostling with it all the time, but eventually you're gonna figure out a system that's comfortable for you, and it's gonna sorta of be like it's not there anymore. And a lot's gonna come in with that besides the size and type of gun. A lot of it is going to have to do with where you carry, number one whether you carry appendix, whether you carry outside the waistband, whether you carry at the three or four o'clock position is gonna really be determined by how comfortable you wanna be 
and what sort of disabilities you have and what sort of body type you have. If you've got a big old keg beer gut, appendix is probably not going to be very comfortable for you because it's going to bend the gun out and push the bottom of the holster into your uh, in your bladder area which is not very comfortable so if you're a long lean guy kind of like me appendix carry is going to work great for you if you have a back injury let's say like i do maybe four or five o'clock carry is not going to work out for you that's actually one of the reasons why i personally moved away from it along with having uh, a lifetime of shoulder issues it's harder for me to reach around and grab from the four five or even six o'clock position to get my handgun particularly if you've done any sort of combatives training you'll find that it's also more difficult to get behind you if somebody's punching you or has you on the ground or if you're in somebody's guard or if they're in yours all easier to usually access on the hip or closer to the front of your body so you're going to have to decide which one of those is more important to you because there's offsets to everything even though appendix is easier to draw it is just inherently slightly more dangerous because you have some things down there that you don't want to hit so you need to figure out where you want to carry then you need to figure out a good holster system for that because a lot of people consider manual safeties and things like that. Your number one safety is a good quality holster. If you have a good quality holster that locks in and won't come out when you tip it upside down, there's a fairly good chance nothing will get in the trigger guard and run the action without you wanting it to happen in the first place. So a good quality holster from a good quality manufacturer. I would stick to Kydex personally. However, if you're a leather guy, just make sure it's an extremely good quality holster. And also remember that the real danger with leather holsters is overuse and eventually they get weared out they get wore out and then they uh, have a tendency to cause negligent discharges so a kydex holster will probably not do that i would well i would well assume and you're probably going to be just a little bit safer with the more modern technology which is honestly generally the case so once you've figured out where you want to carry then you can kind of figure out what size of gun is applicable to you so I'm a big guy again, so I've got a big surface area to cover up stuff. So if I want to carry something like a Canik SFX or even a full size 1911, which I actually used to carry, I can do that. If you're 5'2 and you weigh 100 pounds, eh, you're just gonna have to consider, you know what I mean? A lot of people even go the way of pocket carry. So if you're, if it's impossible for you to carry on your waistband, which I would definitely recommend, it's easier to access, maybe consider something like this Ruger LCP 380, which is easy to carry in the pocket, extremely comfortable. You can carry it in basketball shorts. That's actually why I own it, by the way. But I even carry it all the time with a pocket carry holster, so it isn't able to fire inside my pocket. A lot of people carry without a round in the chamber. One thing you're gonna to have to consider with that is how likely you are to actually need your gun quickly. In a lot of cases, when you're gonna need your firearm, you're gonna to need to get it out, get it into action immediately, and often or not, you will only have one arm to do so. Four point three three. Again, imagine if you're being stabbed, you're gonna have one arm out, or imagine if you're carrying a child, imagine if you just happen to have groceries in your hand, whatever the case may be, you might not be able to manipulate that slide. So if you're absolute on not carrying one in the chamber, I would seriously consider getting a gun with a notched rear sight in the back so you can run it off your belt or your pocket or your shoe or whatever you need to. That was fancy. Getting back to the size of gun though. Different size guns obviously shoot different calibers. I really like 9mm personally. It has the best of both worlds for me. It has good recoil control. It's relatively cheap, usually fairly available, although not so much the case right now, but it is the most popular handgun round in the United States. So the vast majority of the pistols that you see on the table fire the 9mm cartridge. If you would like something larger than the 9mm, you are gonna have to most likely go for a subcompact or a compact gun or a full-size gun, and I can give you an example of what those look like here. This is the Taurus G2C, more of a subcompact, but still a double stack design. So it fills up your hand, it's easier to hold uh, while you shoot, which inherently makes it easier to control the recoil and get faster shots than something like this single stack. For example, this is Glock 42, it's a nine millimeter, or it's a, a 380, but still. Then if you want to move up to a compact, you've got something like this Beretta APX here, which you can see has a longer barrel than the G2C and a longer grip, and it's going to hold more rounds. This is going to hold around 15 rounds or so of 9mm, okay? Whereas the Canik SFX is a full-size gun with a full-size barrel, 
and it's going to hold a significant more round, a significant amount more rounds than the other two will. This actually has 19 right out the right out of the gate. On top of that, barrel length not only helps with recoil control, but it helps with velocity of the cartridge. So whatever cartridge you're gonna be shooting, the longer the barrel from three to five inches, you're just gonna have slightly more power, slightly more penetration, and slightly more bullet expansion with your hollow point rounds, the longer barrel that you have. But again, it's a trade-off, because you need to decide how large of a firearm that you can carry in order to be able to be comfortable. So this gun is great, but if you leave it at home all the time, maybe a gun like this, you're gonna be better off with. Because in most cases, just having the firearm is significantly better than having a really, than having no firearm at all. So just having the gun can be a deterrent in 90% of the cases. So have a gun maybe like this and get really good with it. Because I can tell you, even though this gun is small and it's easier for me to shoot a gun like this, I can still shoot this little 380 really, really well. Okay. It really depends on your skill level and it really depends on your ability to conceal and how much gun you wanna carry on a daily basis, which size of gun that you want, and it's gonna have pros and cons. Smaller guns are gonna be more comfortable, easier to conceal, larger guns are gonna be easier to shoot, they're gonna have higher capacity, and they're gonna have more velocity. Often, a higher caliber as well. If you get into the really small guns like this Ruger 380, they just simply don't make these in larger calibers than 380. So if you want this size of gun, you're gonna have to be comfortable with the 380 cartridge, which personally for me is a little bit anemic, especially compared to modern day nine millimeters like the uh, SIG P365, which is incredibly small, but still holds 12 rounds of nine millimeter. Once you get past the size of firearm that you wanna get into, you're gonna to have to kind of figure out what action you would like. The most popular type of firearm on the market is going to be the striker fired pistol. No question. Many, many reasons why that is. Uh, easy to man manufacture, easier to learn. Uh, consistent trigger pull is a big deal and no manual safety to worry about. A lot of people when they first get into carrying a firearm, they require a manual safety because they don't understand Firearm safety, keep your finger off the trigger, have a comfortable holster, make sure you don't uh, point the gun at anything you're not willing to destroy, and et cetera, and et cetera. The reality is, though, is that they're just easier to shoot for most people. If you get into something like this CZP07, which is a double single action pistol, after you pull this long trigger pull here, which is basically considered the firearm safety, is this long, heavy trigger pull on the first shot. The gun cycles the action, and then you have this beautifully short and crisp single action trigger. So for your first shot on double action, it's gonna be worse than a striker fired pistol, but the remaining 15 shots are going to be easier and more accurate. Also, if you had time, you could pull the gun out, rock the hammer, and then you could have that amazing single action pull. Another benefit to the double action is that it's just simply safer to carry for the most part. Imagine having to accidentally pull this trigger versus this trigger, which is why a lot of people opt for double action carry for an appendix style uh, carry system, me included. It just makes you feel a little bit more comfortable having that little bit longer trigger pull without having any manual safeties in the way at all. So I don't have to have two hands to rack around in the gun. I don't have any manual safeties to forget about. All I do is pull the gun out, pull the trigger, and yeah, it's a little bit longer, but if you pull it quickly and you get used to the trigger pull, all it really is is a training issue because I can shoot this pistol at double action, again, at 50 yards and beyond with no issues. It just takes some practice. So 
The double action system is a nice system, however, it takes a lot more training than a striker fired gun like this. So if you plan on only putting 50 rounds up through your gun per year, I would suggest probably a striker fired gun. There's also single action only, which is what this uh, Staccato C2 is here. The advantage to that is you are always going to have an absurdly good trigger pull. Why do you want a short, fast trigger pull? Number one, because it gives you less distance to mess up the shot. All of accuracy and all of handgun shooting for the most part is your ability to control the trigger, pin the trigger to the rear, push the trigger to the rear, pull the trigger to the rear, however you want to say it, without disturbing the sights off the target. It's easier to do that if there's less distance and less weight. Whew. To offset the incredibly short light trigger of a single action trigger, you have a manual safety. In the case of a 1911 or 2011, you actually have two. So you have an ambi safety on each side and you have a grip safety as well. So not only do you have to manually take off the safety, but you have to press in the grip safety in order for the gun to work. See here? But if you depress the grip safety, bang. That again is a complicated battery of arms that has a lot of pros and a lot of cons and you're really gonna have to look into that to decide if it's right for you or not. So after you consider the size, weight, capacity, action, holster, and the position in which you think you want to carry, the next thing to really consider is what type of pistols have you narrowed it down to that are actually in your price range. Firearms vary wildly in reliability and accuracy, and it, price is not always a good way to judge whether or not your gun is going to be good. I've had $200 guns on this channel, like the Taurus, that have run very reliably, and I have had $700 guns, like the M18, that have not. So you're really gonna have to consider what your price range is and then figure out what the best guns are for you in that particular price range. If your price range is 200 to $300, don't cry. There's guns out there that will serve you well for that price. Runs like a top. Like a what? Runs like a top. That's a saying. <laughs> However, you won't have near as many options as you will something like the four to $700 price range where most of the popular guns lie, like the Glock, the M&P, the CZs, uh, the P10C, all the stuff, the Walther PPQ, all those guns come in subcompact variants, compact variants, full-size guns. Many, many guns are available in that price range that will serve your needs. After you figure out what price, you're going to have to try to decide after all of that, if you still have a couple left, if you've decided on, let's say, a compact 9mm pistol like a Glock 19 or an M&P or maybe even the, uh, the SIG M18, you're going to have to consider reliability. A lot of people consider how the gun feels in your hand, which is super great, don't get me wrong, but it's going to have to be a reliable gun in order for you to actually get the gun out of it. I would rather have a gun that is significantly less accurate and runs a thousand rounds with no, with no reliability issues than the most accurate whiz bang fastest gun in the world that has a malfunction every hundred rounds. Because you never know when that's gonna happen and I can tell you that would be worst case scenario. Somebody that doesn't do a lot of shooting and doesn't uh, perform malfunction drills, having a stove pipe or a double feed or anything like that you don't know how to control, you might as well just throw the gun away at that point. So. Remember that reliability is the utmost category when it comes to a firearm, accuracy is second, and all of the other little features are third. Dead trigger.
seriously recommend that whatever firearm that you buy, I know people like to be different and I know you like to be unique little snowflakes and that's great. But for the most part, especially if it's your first gun, I would recommend getting a firearm from a reputable manufacturer and I would not allow any sort of gun uh, clerk type of dude to, to talk me into some random gun like a Gershaw or something like that. There's a lot of advantages to getting popular guns. That's why they're popular. The Glock stays the king of handguns, not because it's necessarily the best gun on the market, but because everywhere you go, you'll find magazines, holsters, ammunition, sights, all these little things that go with it because this gun is a system. You know, a lot of people don't like when you call it a system, but it is. The CZ P07 means nothing to me without the holster and the magazine and the sights and the ammunition to go with it. So remember, if you get a popular gun, like a uh, SIG, for example, or a P365, or maybe even a Glock 43X, you're gonna be able to find everything that you're gonna need right at that store. So especially if you're new to firearms, you don't wanna have to order stuff online, stuff like that, it's gonna be a really good idea to go with a quality manufacturer. One thing that's usually gonna guarantee is good customer service, good reliability, a fair amount of accuracy, and aftermarket support, and all of those things, especially for a first time gun owner, you're gonna need. One of the last things to consider that I don't think people think of a lot is you're gonna have to get a gun that's fun to shoot. For real, that's really important. A lot of people think it's a secondary thing. I'll just carry it and get used to it and yada yada. If the gun's fun to shoot, you're gonna shoot it a lot. And if you shoot it a lot, you're gonna be real good with it. So let's say you get a subcompact uh, Taurus like this in a 45 ACP, because you want that punch, right? The problem is that that gun's gonna recoil heavily, and the ammunition price is gonna be more expensive. So you're not gonna bring that gun out to the range very often. A lot of times you'll see people with a competition gun, a gun that they have for home defense, and then a carry gun, and they shoot their competition gun thousands of rounds a year, and they shoot two or three rounds out of their carry gun to maintain functionality you know every couple of months or whatever if the gun that you carry on you should most likely be the gun that you shoot the most because that's the one that matters the most if you actually have to pull that gun out and use it oh man every bullet has a lawyer attached to it and uh, there's a lot of things that involve with a civilian shooting that you are going to be significantly better off if you are a more accurate and quicker shooter especially confidence in your firearm. If you have enough draw practice and enough trigger time on your firearm that you can operate that thing without thinking, then you can focus on threats, then you can focus on uh, liabilities and different outcomes that may happen in the current situation that you're in, significantly better than trying to walk yourself through the steps of drawing your gun, uh, racking around, turning on and off the safety, Make sure that you train enough and practice enough with your firearm that you feel confident with it. That's, where, that's what it comes right back to. It's not just the firearm that you need to be confident in, it's, it's yourself. You need to be confident that you can operate that firearm safely for you and safely for any other bystanders that might be in the area in case you had to use the firearm. So now we're gonna go off the tripod a little bit here and we're gonna just take you through some of the guns that I carry and I'm gonna give you a brief description of why I carry them right before we go. That way you can kind of get an idea of how I've applied some of the things that I've been talking about. One of my oldest carry guns is the CZ P07 and you can tell that it uh, has had some use in its life. Uh, this gun has a an untold amount of rounds through it. it has gone through significant changes from having tritium sights to fiber optic sights. It had a stock trigger, then it had a trigger I put in it. Then I had a CZ or a Cajun Gunworks put a really good trigger in it. Uh, not a competition trigger, it's still safe, still drop safe, everything like that. They just significantly smoothed out the double action pull for me. One of the reasons why I like the PO7, it's extremely reliable. This is one of, if not the most reliable firearm that I have, particularly when running uh, defensive rounds like hollow points, for example. Some guns will run FMJ very well, but not run hollow points, and you won't know that if you go out and shoot 50 or 100 rounds through them at your local range. I know that costs a lot of money, but I bet it would be worth it in the long run, particularly for your peace of mind. 
The CZ P07 for me is extremely ergonomic. It's got a little bit bigger grip. I have a little bit longer hands, so it fits my hand very well. It also runs the double action system, which I like because I said a lot of times I carry appendix carry. So if I'm going to be uh, sticking this near my junk area, I like having the extra benefit of that very long double action trigger pull. On top of that, when I put the gun back, as you can see, when I pull the trigger, the hammer comes back. I can press my thumb on the back of the hammer and ensure that there are no uh, discharges of the firearm that I don't intend to have. So I can pull up and I can holster the gun and feel very safe and confident about my battery of arms with this handgun. It's big enough to where I can shoot it very, very well, but it's small enough to where it's fairly comfortable for me to carry. So it's a compact handgun. It holds 15 rounds in the magazine, one in the tube, which is more than enough to get the job done. I like this gun, and I usually do carry a spare magazine. Spare magazines are not generally about capacity necessarily, but about clearing malfunctions. If I were to have a malfunction in this gun, the first thing I would do is drop that old magazine, because that magazine or that ammunition combination is most likely the problem. I would regas the gun up and go. You can't do that without a spare magazine. Another gun that I like to carry, particularly pocket carry, is going to be this Glock 42. I don't carry it very much anymore, but I just got back into it a little bit recently, particularly when I'm running. It is a 380, which is, again, a very anemic cartridge, although still does the job. Uh, I promise you if you put the gun, or if you put the uh, rounds where they need to go, it'll do the job. It's a little bit bigger than your average 380, like this LCP, for example, and what I get out of that for that little extra size is I get a little bit more controllability and a little bit more accuracy. For a gun this small, uh, for a guy my size, I'm six foot four, it's very hard to shoot already. So not only have I uh, upgraded it a little bit, but I've also thrown these rubber grips on here, which just helps me maintain control of the pistol a little bit better. I can shoot this gun real well, I've shot it a lot, and it's extremely reliable, and it's also for one of those times when you really, really don't have the space to carry a gun, this is a good one to have. One of my main carry guns is going to be this SIG 365 here. I really like this gun. I was initially a little bit on the fence about it because they've had some parts breakages and things like that, however, I have about 2,500 rounds for this gun with zero failures. So. I'm confident in this gun. I like this gun. You can see it's got some green stuff on it. I dremeled this uh, holster uh, months and months ago and still every time I put it in that holster, it pulls this little green stuff off, so sorry about that. But it uh, doesn't affect the reliability at all because I, I shoot this out of this holster quite a bit. This gun has a revolutionary magazine design where it has the same size grip as a single stack pistol. As you can see here, this is my Glock 43. They have the same width of grip, however, this is a single stack and this is a double. These hold the same amount of rounds, although you can see that there's a significantly lower footprint with the SIG P365. But nothing's free in this world, and I can tell you between the two of these, which one do you think I shoot better? The answer is this one, because it's a little bit bigger, but it's also a little bit more comfortable, uncomfortable, and it's a little bit harder to carry overall. So. That is the game that everybody plays when they pick a carry gun. How big, how small, what is more important to you overall? Obviously, since I can shoot fairly well to begin with, I can shoot the SIG P365 more than well enough to carry it comfortably, so that's what I do. One of the guns that I've been carrying a lot lately is the Staccato C2. I've been carrying it in this LAS concealment holster. Uh, when I want to carry a little bit bigger gun, I'm wearing a sweatshirt or a coat or something like that, and I have no problem concealing this plus a spare magazine. That allows me, uh, what is that, 16, 16, and 1, so 33 rounds of 9mm on tap that I can shoot as fast as I possibly can and as accurate, more accurate than any other gun on this table. No lock back on the mag, it's not the gun's fault. 50 yards, 26 ounce carry gun, I'll take that. The reason why that is is because of that single action design and because I grew up with 1911s. So I shoot 1911s better than any other gun. They're more accurate for me and this one is a reliable double stack version of that for only around 26 ounces. So it fits my weight size action, capacity needs, all that stuff in one neat little package. But again, if I'm wearing basketball shorts or something like that, or I'm going to the gym, I'm probably not gonna be carrying this. I'm probably gonna be carrying something like this. So at the end of the day, 
one gun doesn't fit everything. Anyone who says that is omitting facts and, or just straight up lying. You need to figure out what gun's right for you. If you're gonna buy just one gun uh, and you end up with something like a P365, for example, you're not gonna have a gun that's as fun to shoot as something as, as like the uh, uh, Canik SFX. And not only that, but it's just not going to be as an effective gun in the moment. However, if you buy this gun, you might not have it in the moment to begin with, so maybe this is better off. It's up to you, you decide. Hopefully I helped you out. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. $200 gun, that's pretty impressive. I'll say.